Hello, my name is Danny Hernandez. I'll be going over the questions in regards to SEBA's acquisition of Allied Colloids and also beating out Hercules Corporation to purchase Allied. The first question is, what caused Allied Colloids to become a takeover target? In any situation, when companies are looking to merge, you should be looking for synergy, which is the belief that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. This means that both companies' resources put together, you can do more with actually the same amount of stuff you have been doing. In this case, Allied Colloids and SIVA would have a greater purchase power according to Magnus Grimond of The Independent. He also cited that their per they could purchase goods at a lower price. Furthermore, both companies specialize in water-soluble polymers which has been a growing market over the past five years, and it has been steadily growing by 10 to 15% in that time. So therefore, there was synergy possible for SIBA. A greater purchase power, you can purchase goods at a lower price, maximizing your profits, and lastly, there is a growing market for goods. Next, Allied was already a current customer of SIBA. Allied generated 14% of their total sales, and so putting them together, this would free up more resources. That way you can attract potential customers and uh, market segmentation. Allied had had a recent change in management, and the company was continuously underperforming. Having all of those traits put together, this caused Allied Colloids to become a takeover target. SIBA purchased the company for 1.42 billion pounds, which translated into 205 pounds per share. That is actually twice the actual value of the company. SIBA knew that it would take a loss, but were very optimistic and said that they believed they would see a positive effect in the EPS in less than a year. After all, the main objective of the merger was to increase purchase power and also take advantage of synergy, all while maximizing the value of each shareholder. Furthermore, it valued the acquisition by saying it would keep 3,400 jobs in Europe. This is compared to Hercules, who was a United States company, and you're not exactly sure what would happen to those jobs if they were going to be lost or moved to a different market. All in all, SIBA was in a large bidding war with Hercules, but eventually won by purchasing the company at twice its value. It rationed this belief with an increasing market and a better growth rate. With its technology and research that it would gain from Allied, it would be able to minimize costs and further grow the company without eliminating positions. So what effect did the acquisition have on SIBA's balance sheet and performance? As you can see, listed below are all the different effects that it had on the balance sheet or income statement. First, starting from left to right, SIBA purchased Allied mostly through debt. This made the company very illiquid. Next, the company had to create 10 million, of 10 million new shares, not not to purchase Allied, but actually to fund future projects and also to pay its employees. Therefore, this should have been a big red flag uh, for investors. Goodwill was amortized for 33 years, while R&D and integration costs were directly written off that same year. The turnover did increase by a small margin, as well as the operating profits. They did take a huge loss in the first year of $792 million. In 1999, a year after the acquisition, when the company had hoped that the EPS trend was going to take a positive hit, the net income decreased by 35%. Lastly, SIBA had to cut spending on five of its 10 ventures just because it wanted to fund 
the most profitable ones. That way it can show a larger gain in their balance sheet. So who won and who lost? On the left, I believe Hercules and the former CEO, David Farrar, won. Hercules avoided paying for an underperforming company, and even in hindsight, the company didn't perform to what it was supposed to. The CEO, he walked away from his position. He had cashed out all of his overvalued stocks before the company had tanked, and also was relocated to another position, so he was still making money. As for the losers, Siba, the merger had underperformed to their valuation. They actually ha ended up cutting positions, which they had in turn said that they were not going to do. There was that 35% decrease in net income. They did have to cut spending to some of their ventures and thus were not able to become more profitable. Their margins decreased from 16% to a little over 1%. They did have to decrease spending, as I said before, and they had to increase the cost of saving, letting others know that they had to have more insecurity because they weren't sure about the possible future. Lastly, since the acquisition, Siba was purchased and merged with Gagey to perform Siba Gagey, which was later merged with Sandoz and created Navortis. A pharmaceutical company. Much later in 2008, Siba was once again bought out from Novortis and incorporated into BASF, a German chemical producer. My answer still holds that Siba was the loser in this case. Although the company is now in BASF, who sells like items in what Siba was originally selling, it took them a very long time to get there. Siba did not become the powerhouse it had predicted with the purchase of Allied Colloids. Instead, it was bought out several times until it was later incorporated into a larger company. Thank you.